Good day, learners. How are you? On the first quarter, we discussed about pre-colonial period and what are the known literature during that period. But here on, let's move on to the period of apprenticeship or the American period. It happened during 1910 until 1930. I will discuss with you what happened to our literature and what was our literature during the period of apprenticeship. Now let's have a little background of the period of apprenticeship. The period of apprenticeship is a result of the following events. First, the Filipino revolutionists won against the Spaniards who colonized the Philippines for more than 300 years. After that event, on June 12, 1898, Filipinos raised the Philippine flag as a symbol of our independence and General Emilio Aguinaldo was selected as the first president of the Philippine Republic. However, this was short-lived because the Filipino-American War resulted in the defeat of General Miguel Malvar in 1903. Now, the peace movement started as early as 1900s. However, Despite all of these events, as we were conquered by the Americans, Filipino writers started writing again, and this time, they are imitating the Americans. Also, in 1910, a new group of writers started to write in English. During this time, Filipino writers went into all forms of literature like news reporting, poetry, stories, plays, essays, and novels. However, nationalism of the Filipino remained undaunted, means Filipinos at that time were not afraid to fight and their love for the country is not intimidated. Hence, also during the time, Spanish, Tagalog, the vernaculars, and finally, English were the mediums used in literature during these times. Now, the writers in Spanish, they wrote about the nationalism, like honoring Rizal and other heroes. The writers in Tagalog continued on their lamentations on the conditions of the country and their attempts to arouse love for one's native tongue. However, the writers in English, they started imitating the themes and methods of the Americans. Now let's talk about what was our literature during the period of apprenticeship, or what are the characteristics of Philippine literature during this period. Remember, during this period, the language used in writing are Spanish, Filipino, and English. Since during the period of apprenticeship, we use three languages, the Spanish, Filipino, and English as we write the literature, let's discuss each or what are the accomplishments of the Filipinos for each languages. First, we have the literatures in Spanish. Writing in Spanish is still a trend during the apprenticeship, apprenticeship period. Remember, those who writes in Spanish honors Rizal and other heroes. Here are the famous writers of literature in Spanish. We have Cicelio Apostol. He wrote Arizal and is considered the best poem in praise of the hero of Bagumbayan. We have Fernando Maguerero. He collected the best of his poem in book called Cresalidas. And one of the poems written in this book was Invocacion e Rizal. Next, we have Jesus Balmori. He is well known for his pen name, Batikuling. He and Manuel Bernabe participated in a debate on the topic Remembrance and Forgetfulness. We also have Manuel Bernabe. He is a lyric poet. He was more attractive to the public in a debate with Balmori because of his Melodious words, he defended Olvido. 
Clara M. Recto. He collected his poems in a book entitled Bajo los Cocoteros. One of his writings dedicated to Rizal is Ante el Martir. We also have Adelina Guerrea. She was the first woman, woman poet in the Philippines who was good in Spanish. She obtained the Nobel Prize in her El Nido. We have Isidro Marpori. He became famous for his four books entitled Aroma de Insueno and Macario Adriatico. He wrote The Legend of Mindoro entitled The La Punta, Punta di Salto. So you notice that these writers, since they wrote in Spanish, their themes and tones is more on honoring Rizal and other heroes. Now let's proceed to Filipino literature or literatures in Filipino. In this literature, the writers used Filipino language or vernaculars. Also, as I mentioned before, that writers in Tagalog, they continue their lamentations on the conditions of the country and their attempts to arouse love for one's native tongue. Let me share with you some famous Filipino writers during this period. We have Lope K. Santos. He was the father of the national grammar, language grammar, and he was known for his piece Panaag at Sikat. Jose Corazon de Jesus, he was also known on, on his pen name, Jose Batute. He was called the poet of love in his time. Ag isang punong kahoy is an elegy written by him and, is, and it is believed to be his masterpiece. We have Armando V. Hernandez. His best masterpiece is Ang Panday. He was dubbed at the, as the poet of the laborers. We have another known writer during the Filipino literature. We have Valeriano Hernandez Pena. He was known as Tandang Anong, and he considers Nena at Nene his masterpiece. Next, we have Inigo Ed Regalado. He is a popular storyteller, novelist, and newspaper man. He reached the peak of his success by the sumpong of his pen. Now, Julia Cruz Balsameda, a famous Tagalog poet during this period, classified the three kinds of Tagalog poets. We have the poet of the heart, o makata ng puso. This included Lope K. Santos, Inigo Ed Regalado, Carlos Getmaitan, El Defonso Santos, and many more. Also have the poet of life, o makata ng buhay. This was led by Lope K. Santos again, Jose Corazon de Jesus, Florentino Colientes, and many more. Lastly, we have the poet of the stage, or Makata ng Tanghalan. This was led by Aurelio Tolentino, Patricio Mariano Severino Reyes, and Tomas Remegio. Now let's proceed to the period literature in English. In a way, we can say that we can trace the beginnings of Philippine literature in English with the coming of the Americans. But let me share with you again what happened by the time Filipinos started writing in English. For this purpose, we can divide this period into three time frames. Namely, we have the period of reorientation. So during this period, by 1900s, English came to be used as a medium of instruction in the public schools. From the American forces, they recruited the first teachers of English. So during this period, Filipinos are being oriented on how to use the English language as part of American coloniz colonization. To make this happen, schools use English as a medium of instruction. Now, on the second time frame, we have the period of imitation. Philippine literature during this time is also 
called the period of imitation. Why? Because by 1919, the UP College Folio published the literary compositions of the first Filipino writers in English. They were the pioneers in short story writing. Now, because of this, they were then groping their way into imitating American and British models, which resulted in a stilted, artificial, and unnatural style, lacking vitality and spontaneity. And as for the last time frame, we have the period of self-discovery and growth. By this time, Filipino writers had acquired the mastery of English writing. They now confidently and competently wrote on a lot of subjects, although the old-time favorites of love and youth persisted. They went into all forms of writing like the novel and the drama. Aside from that, poetry written in English have the following characteristics. Poets wrote in free verse in odes and sonnets and other types of poetry. Poetry during this time was original, spontaneous, competently written, and later incorporated social consciousness. Now, short story writing, together with poetry, flourished during these times. As for the publications, or newspaper companies during the period of apprenticeship, we have the Philippine Free Press. They provided the first incentives to Filipino writers in English by offering prizes to worthwhile contribution. Other publication followed suit. However, for the drama, this period was very um, drama was very unfortunate during the period of apprenticeship because they did not reach the heights attained by the novel or the short story. So, those are the things you have to know about the Philippine literature during the period of apprenticeship. It is important to know the history for us to have an idea what are the literatures during that period. This is very important in critical reading and analyzing. So, that's all for our lesson. I hope you learned something from me today. This is your teacher, Teacher Joy. Thank you and see you again.